Okay, here is problem um, 733. It's actually the same for 733 and 32, but let's do 733. What they give you here is a, two boards that are nailed together at six inch spacings, two nails at each, at each line. Um, the downward shear is given as 600 pounds, and they want you to find the shear force picked up at each nail. So in fact, they don't give you the cross-sectional area of the, of the nail, so you can't get the shear stress in the nail, but they want to figure out the shear force supported in each nail. Uh, the other thing to note is actually in fact, there's two along the cross section. You don't need the real spacing in this direction. It's really you just need the spacing down the x-axis. Okay. All right. So in this case, um, the plane at which the nail sees the shear, right? If you look at it, here's. Here's a nail going through. So the plane, this right here, location, is the shear plane. Okay? So that's the point where, if I were to draw the free body diagram, right? This guy up here put some force on it, some shear force, and then the sh there's a balancing shear on this surface area, okay, that picks up that pin. Um, so we need to compute the shear right at this plane, okay, the bending shear. That's the one that's going to act on this plane. So it happens also to be the maximum, because it is at the neutral axis, right? But if it Let's say it were three boards nailed together, right? So you had three boards nailed together. And then, even though it doesn't look at here, imagine they're all equal width. You would need to compute the shear at this one-third, or two-third, depending on which way you look at it, location. That would be the plane in which the nail would be shearing, okay? Right across here, all right? But in this case, you know, so you're computing the shear at the plane where the the nail is in shear, okay? To get the shear force that's on that, we're going to use the, the transverse shear equation of the beam, and that one, we use the Q for this section, okay? So this is actually going to be the area we use for the Q, okay? That's going to be our Q. All right. Um, So we know that the shear on this plane from the transverse bending is going to be VQ on IT, right? Now normally the form of this equation we do is where we multiply by T. So we get the shear flow, which is the stress times the thickness, okay? In this case, this distance right here is the thickness. Right? That's the shear flow by definition, and that's going to equal VQ on I. All right? So we need to compute the total I and then the Q. All right? The V is given. So that's the shear. You know, imagine this were like one welded beam. That would be the shear that happens between the two boards. Right? That would be the, well, that's two boards, but the shear on that plane. Okay? That would be the max transverse shear in the, in, in the beam. But since we have the nails there, it's the nails that are going to have to transmit that shear force. So the Q, right, remember the Q has units of force per length, okay? So the length, you know, that's how much Q per X, right? So if this is one inch, you'll get a 
a total force of Q. If it's 2 inches, they'll have a total force on that area of 2 times Q, so on and so forth. So each nail, or each set of nails, has to pick up, I should do it this way, the Q over this area, or that's the space. That's equal to the spacing, right? That's going to be the spacing. Six inches, right? So basically, these two nails have to pick up the Q over that length. And the force in each nail is going to be half of that, right? So the force in a nail, right? Or actually, two times the force in there, because there's two nails, has to equal the 6 inches times Q, right? Remember, the Q is force per length. I multiply that by the length that picks up the nail, and that gives me a force. And there's actually two of those, right? So this is the force that's on this surface area, and that's picked up by two nails, okay? So we're going to use that to get the force in the nail. In this case, it's going to equal to well, 3 inches times Q. And Q is going to be equal to VQ on I. This is where we're going to get the VQ on I. All right, so now we need to compute the geometric factors. These are pretty easy. I is the I of this total beam cross-section. So it's going to be 1 12th base times height. Its base is 6. The height is 4 inches cubed over 12. So that's going to equal 32 inches to the fourth. Now the Q is of this area. Again, remember, because we need to get the Q at the shear plane, the plane where the bolt the nails or the fasteners are in shear. In this case, it happens to be at the maximal centroidal axis, the neutral axis, right? So that Q. That's going to be this area, which is 6 inches times 2 inches, that's the area, times the distance from the shear plane, the plane we want to know the shear, transverse shear, to the centroid. So that's going to be Half of the two inches, that's just one inch, right? So time one inch. And that's going to give me just 12 inches cubed, right? So those are pretty easy to compute. So now that tells me that the shear flow is going to be V, which is 600 pounds, times Q, which is... 12 inches cubed over I, which is 32 inches to the fourth. And that gives me 225, what are the units? Pounds, inch cubed over inch to the fourth, so that's pounds per inch. All right? So the total force on this area right? So the total shear on an area supported by two nails, this area, right, is going to be um, Q times that spacing length which is going to be 225 pounds per inch times the spacing, which is 6 inches. So that gives me that that force, the total force in that area is 225 times 6, or that's 1,350 pounds. So basically, on this plane, right, so the bending force is this way, so if you look at this a little, look at this, that means that on the bottom, on the bottom of this surface, 
right? You would have a force of 1,350 pounds acting on this area. So that this is what I'm drawing here is the force on the bottom of this board, right? It's on this surface, right? What's picked up by those two nails. So then the, each nail picks up half of those. So that means the force in each nail is going to be 675 pounds. Right? So that means the force in each nail is half of that, or the same as we would have gotten from that, and that's going to be 675 pounds, because there's two nails at each point. Okay? So that's the answer. All right? So again, just to review, it's still just VQ on I or VQ on IT. Usually whenever you have a, you know, some sort of fastener problem, you're going to use the shear flow instead of the actual shear stress. The, the, uh, Q gets multiplied by the spacing, right? And that gives you actually the force at each point that there's a fastener. Now the other big concept though is, right, we need to get the transverse shear, the bending transverse shear, at the plane where the fastener is in shear. In this case, it happens to be the neutral axis. So that's the Q we use to get this tau, right? Okay? Like I said, if we had three boards, we wouldn't have used the Q at the midpoint, even though that's the biggest one, we would have used the one that's up one-third. Okay? All right.